Okay, up to this point, we've looked specifically at two types of prepositions. We've looked at prepositions that take an accusative object, and we've also looked at prepositions that take a dative object. Now, um, what we're going to look at today uh, is something called two-way prepositions. Uh, of course, as the name suggests, these are prepositions that could be either one or the other. They could be either dative or they could be accusative depending upon whether they describe a location or the direction. So if I were to describe a location using a two-way preposition, I will use the dative case. If I describe a, if I describe a uh, direction or a motion with a two-way preposition, I will use the accusative case. Now this seems sort of uh, like splitting hairs, but actually it's very useful in German and, and is actually used quite frequently. Um, as usual, we're going to begin our presentation with a, uh, our discussion of two-way prepositions with an example in English. Now, I'm using this example not to show how uh, German is similar to English, but I'm going to actually show how they diverge on this point. Um, German offers much more nuanced expression with two-way prepositions than English does. In fact, we'll look at an example in English that is quite ambiguous because English lacks two-way prepositions or the clarity that two-way prepositions describe. Um, we're going to then look at a list of uh, two-way prepositions. I'll kind of go through them and then look at some contractions uh, that are commonly used with two-way prepositions. So let's take a look now at the English example. Um, Hans is running behind the house. We have Hans in front of the house and we have a backyard. Now, I can look at the sentence, if you think about it, in two ways. The first way, I, I guess the first way, the more commonly thought way, would be this, that he is in the front of the house, and something's going on in the backyard. He wants to find out, so he runs behind the house to find out what's going on. So he's in the front, he's running behind the house, into the backyard. Now the other way, if you think about it, which also makes perfect sense, is this, that he's in the backyard and he's within the confines of the backyard, the location of the backyard, the general location is the backyard, uh, but they're playing a the game. Uh, the game is um, hide and go seek and so they're running around and um, he's still behind the house, he just happens to be running behind it. So which one is correct? I guess they both are, depending upon what you want to say. However, English doesn't really distinguish between these two uh, options, and therefore it can be ambiguous unless we offer further clarification. Now, German, on the other hand, is quite clear with the example. And it is clear because it uses something called two-way prepositions. So, let's... Uh, Kind of look at two-way prepositions before we return to our example of Hans. So, um, the first question up at the top, wohin geht Frau Schmidt? You'll recall that wohin means where to, whither. Um, it indicates motion away from the speaker. So, I'm not interested where she is at, I'm interested where she is going. Now, uh, the answer to this uses a two-way preposition, in. Uh, sie geht in die Bäckerei. Die Bäckerei is feminine, the bakery. So she's going into the bakery. I'm asking the question, you know, where is she going? Well, she's going into the bakery. Since I'm dealing specifically with motion here, some type of motion is indicated, I'm going to use the accusative form of the two-way preposition in. However, um, let's say I really don't care about where Frau Schmidt's going. I want to know where she's at. So, wo ist Frau Schmidt? So, it's not wohin, I'm not interested in where she's going, I'm actually, I'm actually interested in where she's at. Therefore, my question concerns largely position. So, where is she at? Where is she located? What is her position? Now, I'm just still going to use the same two-way preposition, in. However, this time, since I'm talking about, uh, talking about position, I'm going to use the dative. You'll recall that D, feminine, goes to der dative. So sie ist in der Bäckerei. So where is she at? She's in, she's located inside the bakery. So to summarize, if I'm interested in position, I use the two-way preposition with the dative. 
If I'm interested in motion, I use the two-way preposition with the accusative. So let's return to our, hample, our example of Hans. So Hans, at the in the front of the house, he's running. Er läuft hinter das Haus. Um, since he's running behind, he's in the front yard, he's running behind the house into the backyard, there's some type of motion involved here. And I'm going to use the accusative form of the two-way preposition hinter. And you'll recall that das Haus, neuter, is the same in the accusative, das Haus. Now, the next example is, you recall, he's in the backyard running around. Now, I'm still going to use the same two-way pre preposition, hinter. But now the action is confined within the parameters of the backyard. So he is running around. So it is motion, yes. But it's motion within a prescribed area. And that prescribed area is behind the house. So Hans läuft hinter dem Haus. I'm using data. If you recall that das Haus goes to dem Haus in the data. So two-way prepositions are uh, motion, accusative, uh, position data. Now, what are the two-way prepositions? Um, on this slide and the next slide, I have the, the list of two-way prepositions. Um, now, each preposition is sort of, uh, there's always nuances, uh, shades of meaning. This comes with practice of the language. Prepositions are notoriously hard to master. Um, we have on, which is English, is at, near, or on. And this is a, a what, uh, on in the sense of a vertical surface. Um, I hang up, hanging a picture on the wall, I would use the German two-way preposition an. Uh, wohin geht Peter? The question is where, whither does he go? An den See. He's going to the lake. Here, uh, colloquially, if I go to a lake, I use the preposition an. Now, the next one is asking about position. Wo, wo ist er? An dem See. He's at the lake. Now, auf is a two-way preposition for uh, on top of a uh, horizontal surface or, or at, at a place. Uh, wo hin geht Anna? So where is she going? She's going on to the mountain, on top of the mountain. She's climbing the mountain. I'm going to use auf den Berg. Der Berg, mountain, it will change the den in the accusative. Now, I'm asking where is she at? Wo ist sie? Auf dem Berg. So she's physically located on top of the mountain. That's her position. That's what I'm asking about. I use the dative. Hinter, we've already looked at. Uh, behind and back of. In uh, could mean in or into, depending upon, well, uh, is it a position or is it a motion? Wohin geht Gabi? In das Lokal. She's going into the uh, establishment. Accusative. Wo ist Gabi? Where is she? In dem Lokal. It's going to be dative. Uh, neben means next to. Uh, wohin geht Jens? Named in beer garden. He's going next to the beer garden. Uh, he's going, uh, the beer garden's on the side. He's going along next to it, walking past it. Uh, wo steht Jens? Where is he standing now? Neben dem beer garden, right next to the beer garden, waiting for us to join him at the table. Uh, next slide. Über means above. Uh, about or over uh, positions. Wohin hangst du das Bild? So where are you hanging the picture? It's in my hand. I want to hang it now on onto the wall. Um, I'm going to hang it on the wall, but it's going to be above the table. So I'm hanging the picture over the table. I would use the accusative über den Tisch. Now, now that I'm done hanging it, the process, the action, the motion of hanging it is done. I'm going to describe where it's located physically, its position. It's still above the table, but now it's hanging there. I use the dative, über dem Tisch. Same thing with unter, uh, underneath or among. Wohin geht Peter unter die Menschen? He's going uh, to be with the people. Uh, where is he now? Unter den Menschen, amongst the people. For is sort of the opposite of the uh, of opposite of hinter, which we looked at with the house. For das Haus, for dem Haus, uh, in front of or before, and in zwischen, uh, between two objects. So wohin läuft das Kind? So where is the child running? You know, which is I guess as a parent, sort of a danger dangerous thing for children to do. Um, child is running between the cars. So 
Uh, in one instance, the child is not between the cars, and now she's running between the cars. This shows motion. I'm going to use the accusative. Zwischen die Autos. Wo ist das Kind? Now, where is it now, besides being run over? Uh, it's now between two cars, physically located there. Uh, zwischen den Autos. Den Autos would be uh, plural data. So those are the two-way all the two-way prepositions. Now, uh, normally with two-way prepositions, we say uh, we have the the preposition itself followed by the definite article. Um, so, for instance, auf dem. What we can see, however, with uh, contractions, is there are a few that we could shorten based on uh, colloquial usage. So, an dem goes into am, an das goes on goes to ans, in dem goes into im, in das goes into ins. Now there are some other uh, ones like auf dem goes to alfen, but these are purely colloquial that you use in in in, in everyday speech. Uh, these are not what you call high German. The ones you see on the screen, the, these four. Uh, are high German contractions, and you'll see these uh, all the time uh, in newspapers and things like that. So, two-way prepositions, lots of fun.